And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, your main event of the evening, live around the world, on pay-per-view from Integrated Sports. Now, ready to make his way to the ring from the blue corner, Miguel Beltran Jr. So Miguel Beltran Jr. makes his way in. He loves this opportunity. He turned pro in February of 07 in Mexico and ran off 22 straight wins all in Mexico. He only fought two times outside of Mexico and uh, Beltran lost both times in 2012. He lost a split decision to in Las Vegas to Rocky Martinez for the WBO World Super Featherweight Championship at 130 pounds. In the past two years, he's had five fights. He's three and two with two knockouts. Overall record, 32 and six. Although he says he's 33 and six with 22 knockouts. Boxing, we know the deal with Beltran. Great left hook to the body, Benny. He's crowd pleasing, action fighter, typical Mexican style fighter was what we can compliment him with. You know, and I got to announce his fight against Roman Rocky Martinez. That was a split decision. It was scored 113, 114 by Clark Samantina, Dwayne Ford. Lisa Jump at 116, 111 for Beltran, and that was a heck of a fight. And I really expected big things from him, but then he had some contractual problems and was out of boxing for a year. Yeah, that's kind of too bad. He's got a brother, Alberto Beltran, who's a 154-pound super welterweight. Beltran, a great kid. Is Bob and Alexander. now making his way to the ring from the red corner, Yuriokis Gamboa. Gamboa, great story. We mentioned 300 amateur fights, Olympic gold medalist, four-time Cuban national champ. One time he was considered one of the very best fighters in the world. The former WBA featherweight champ. He was also champion at uh, 126 with five uh, defenses of that and former IBF world champ at 126 as well. You know, he's been as, as talented as an amateur fighter as there ever was. And of course, as a pro, maybe he has not achieved everything he probably would have thought he would have and stayed, you know, at a high, high level. I thought that fight with Crawford, which you did, Colonel, I thought that was kind of a fight that showed the kind of courage he had. I mean, he went up almost 15 pounds to go ahead and take on that fight. Yeah, not only that, I mean, both he and Crawford had the exact uh, career records at that time, 23 and 0 with 16 knockouts. They fought in 2014, and this man, he was given up height and reach advantage to the very talented Terence Crawford, many think is the best fighter in the world today. But this guy's got head movement. He's a great athlete. He can box and brawl. He hasn't fought in a year, but he's always in great shape. Four of his last six fights did go the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, from Arnold Hall in Miami, Florida, our next bout of the evening is brought to you by New Champions Promotions and Jesse Rodriguez. This is your main event scheduled for 10 rounds of professional boxing in the lightweight division. The three judges scoring at ringside, Los Jueces, Rocky Young, John Rupert, and Bill Ray. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, El Arbitro referee and Air Force veteran, Sam Burgos. Presentando primero, peleando desde Asquina Azul, vestiende truza rojo y amarillo, el peso 133 libras. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the gold trim, he weighed in at 133 pounds. Su record profesional, 33 victorias, 6 derrotas, 21 victorias por knockout. His professional record, 33 wins, 6 losses, 21 victories by way of knockout. El hijo de los mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. 
here is the former world title challenger, Miguel Batarito Beltran Jr. His opponent, Su Adversario, Peleando Desde Asquina Rojo, Vistiende Trusa Rojo, Blanco y Azul. El peso 135 libras. His opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, white, and blue, colors of the flag of Cuba. He is a 2004 Olympic gold medalist. Su record professional, 28 victorias, dos derrotas, 17 victorias por knockout. El hijo de Guantamo, Cuba. He is the former WBA and IBF featherweight champion of the world, Yuriokis, el ciclón de Guantanamo, Gamboa. All right, as you take a look at the tail of the tape, you see that Gamboa is an inch and a half shorter. He's a bit heavier. Uh, he's seven years older, and the reach is exactly the same. He's coming off that uh, majority decision over Jason Sosa, a 20 and 2 fighter at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Beltran, September win. Oh, he stopped Michel Munoz in Culiacan, Mexico, in the first round. So they're both ready to fight. You see the records 33 6. And uh, 22 knockouts for Beltran. And for Yuri Orcas Gamboa, 28-2 with 17 knockouts. You know, it's amazing the career of Yuri Orcas Gamboa. I mean, the world was so anxious to see this guy turn pro. He defected and went to Hamburg, Germany, started his professional career there. And then the world awaited for him to come to the United States and make the big fights. Hey, he had, uh, I think, five or six fights over in Germany. Then he came to Miami. And this is where he found a home in the United States. He's in great shape, good-looking kid, nice kid. Has his own uh, brand of cigars. Did you know that, Benny? No, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, he does. Here we go. Scheduled for 12 rounds in the red trunks is Miguel Beltran from Mexico against the Cuban defector, now living in the United States, Kyriakos Gamboa, former world champ. No better example of a Cuban style of fighting than Kyriakos Gamboa. He can make it very difficult for you to get to him. Yeah, he moves. He moves extremely well. He's up and down. When he when he attacks you with his jab, he his head comes down a little bit. But Beltran is a Mexican fighter, and and when I say a Mexican fighter, I mean he's tough and he's slick and he's and he's very very aggressive. So this is uh, this is a very very good match set up by uh, Ruben De Jesus. Miguel Beltran, what he says he's going to do is move around and work the body. He wants to work the body of Gamboa. Yeah, well, he's got to get in there to do that, and Gamboa moves very well, both uh, with his body up and down and uh, side to side. He's very, very tough to hit, as are most Cuban fighters, because they, they learn that in the amateurs from the head movement, and it starts with that. Beltran from Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico, where the Humberto Sorrito Soto, three-time World Division champion there, Hugo Ruiz, Jorge Travieso Arce, Juan Carlos Sanchez, Hugo Castro, Antonio DeMarco, Fernando... Cochulito Montiel, that's a tough town. This is round number one. This is scheduled for 12. Now, Benny, now, Benny, I just got to note that they've uh, changed this, huh? This has gone to uh, 10 rounds. Originally scheduled for 12 rounds. Now it's a 10 round fight. Well, that's OK. We'll just get plenty of action in 10 rounds. Stage manager, Mirtha Cruz limpio, got that information limpio, for me, and I'm glad that, that we got it. Both fighters taking their time so far, trying to feel each other out. Gamboa ever so slick. Not much between them here in round number one uh, in the first two minutes. Gamboa lands. Uh, a shot, but then right back comes uh, Beltran with a shot to the body of Gamboa. 
Gamboa up and down, sideways, circles to his left, back to his right. This is a nice combination of punches. Downstairs and back upstairs. And you know, Meltron dropped the right hand, and Murioki Gamboa pummeled him with the left. And Gamboa, Gamboa is so quick, and look at this, he gets his arm caught in the uh, ropes as Beltran. Look at the body of uh, Gamboa. I mean, he's just really, really cut. You can get stains off that washboard stomach. That's <laughs> Beltran doesn't have the ball. Oh, he gets knocked left down. Hand, and left it, hand. It really clipped him with that left hand. He may not be able to survive. I don't know if Beltran can get up. He just barely got up at the count of nine. And the bell ends the fight. What a surprise. Beltran did. yeah, no. didn't realize the round was over, so right at the very end of the round. The bell sounded in the middle of all that. So it's a 10-8 round, and wow. No change of expression on the face of Gamboa. What a surprise. This is the chance. Kuba, Kuba. Watch this, Benny. Yeah, you know, he, and Sammy Burgos is making the point to keep on going because when he got up, he wanted the fight to continue. But the bell had sounded. Now he caught him with the right hand and dropped it. And boy, no change of expression. That's a big surprise to me that he caught him on the inside. Beltran was trying to mix it up with him, and that really surprised him because he was hit hard with the right hand. You don't want to fight this guy inside in the early going, and look at the hand speed now, and now look at them pick it up. Here's the Mexican in him. Oh, he got hit again with an uppercut. Beltran has come to make a statement. But I'll tell you this, Gamboa is ready for anything he throws at him. Boy, he looks sharp. Yuri Orki Gamboa looks as sharp as can be. Don't forget, he's 36 now, but you know, the lack of fights in the past year at this stage now helps a guy. Hasn't had to get his body punished at all, and he's really cut. He's always in great shape. Well, that was just a clean shot to the head that dropped the Miguel. Big surprise. I didn't think he could get up from that shot, Benny. Well, I think the bell and the timing of it, I think, helped him tremendously. But Gamboa, the cyclone, and that's exactly what he is, because that storm can come at any moment. Gamboa trying to put pressure on uh, Beltran here. Beltran really shocked by that. Uh, much more defensive than he was, but he'll get offensive in a hurry here. Notice the way Gambo, as soon as you get on the inside, he almost what they call in uh, MMA underhooks. He gets his arms underneath him and draws him to him so he can't be hurt. But you know, this is a better weight for Gambo. This is guys his own size. You know, it's not like going up against Crawford, much bigger. Oh, yeah, Crawford was, was bigger and taller and had the longer reach. And as tough as uh, and as gifted as Gamboa is as a fighter, and as much grit as he had, he just couldn't compete with him. And very few guys can compete with Terence. The one inexplicable performance was against Robinson Castellanos, where that stop was stopped in the seventh after uh, Gamboa was down the third and the fourth. See Beltran trying to load up shots, but he hasn't got anything clean with uh, Gamboa yet. We're in the second round of surprise knockdown right at the end of uh, round number one and Beltran hit the canvas and hit it fairly hard right on his uh, nose. But look how quickly he's recovered though. Well that's conditioning and training and, and toughness and grit. Wild left hand caught uh, Beltran. Now here's Gamboa hanging on. Semi Burgos, of course, speaks uh, Spanish, and both of these fighters understand him. So that's always good. Look at the look on, on just the sheen on that uh, chocolate skin of uh, Gamboa. He looks beautiful, doesn't he? Yeah. Look at that hand speed. Look at that. Look how slick he is. 
Beltran wants to move around, wants to attack the body, can't get near the body. Well, that's yeah, that's the problem when you fight any Cuban fighter, much less one as gifted as this guy. 2017 after two in favor of Gamboa. Interesting people in the corner of Gamboa. You got Bones Adams in there helping out. Yeah, Bones uh, rode over with us and uh, one of the great kids in boxing, former world champion. Here you got Vladimir Valdenegro, Ricardo Maldonado, Alberto Perez, the manager of Miguel Beltran. Alberto Perez, a businessman in Fresno, and certainly uh, want to see his boy do well, and Miguel is trying to do everything he can after a hard knockdown in the first round. We're in round three now in Miami. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan along with Benny Ricardo and our entire staff here at uh, New Champion Promotions. Uh, Jesse Rodriguez doing a great job with them and matchmaker Ruben De Jesus and of course integrated sports executive Doug Jacobs. Olympio, 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 suéltalo, suéltalo. And all of a sudden now Beltran letting it go. Right hand that grazed the face of Gamboa. Well Beltran like I said at the very top of the show is no walkover and then all of a sudden, he gets clipped in the first round, and it's beginning to look like it was going to be a short night for Gamboa. But Beltran can can come back in this fight. But Gamboa just has so many tools: his quickness, his hand speed, feet, his power. Look at them fainting at, at each other, and neither one of them decides to go first. And Gamboa just uses a sweeping movement, and he just did that, Benny, to get his right hand through there. That sweeping movement, he didn't even want to hit him. He just wanted to get his right hand through. Every movement has a purpose on the part of Gamboa. So slick, so smart, ring IQ is off the chart. Yeah, he really, well, schooling of 300 amateur fights in Cuba, man. And all kinds of international experience with that. I mean, after all, the Cuban fighters with that many fights were professionals in the day in Cuba. And since he became a professional fighter in Germany and then came over here, there was a time when they were talking about him as being one of the top two or three fighters in the world. He defected while training in Venezuela along with Odlandir Solis and Jan Barthelemy. He has, it's amazing the following Gamboa has, especially here in Miami. Oh, yeah, well, the community here is so heavily. Latino and then there's so many Cubans. Well, look at this back and forth and back and forth. And Beltran is off as they come, the Mexican style fighter. Here the cheers go up, Gamboa, Gamboa. Interesting. Semi Burgos gives the instructions at Mexico. Get your head up. <laughs> Big serious blows landed here with 30 seconds to go in round three. I don't think that uh, Beltran has done enough to take this round because Gamboa's getting through with that jab. You see Beltran loads up that windmill shot but can't land it. And that's the problem with Gamboa. He's so hard to hit because he's in constant movement. See, even there when he was coming in on him, he backed out and slipped around to the left. So you hit him, what are you going to do? Catch it across the front of his stomach? Like fighting a mongoose. Yeah. Bell ends, and that's another Gamboa round. He just outboxed him. 30 26 with the knockdown at the end of the first round after three. Well, you know, fighters come into a fight with a plan. Hey. Miguel Beltran's plan hey. was to hey. move around and then attack the body. You can't even get near the body of Gamboa. Again, originally, uh, Gamboa was scheduled to fight in a. 12-round uh, championship fight, and that went away, so they changed this to a 10-round fight. I want to be sure that everyone knows that this is a 10-round fight, not a 12-round fight. It was uh, announced earlier. You know, it's interesting now. All the Wamas people are lining themselves up up here ringside to watch. 
Gamboa, that's the future fight. Well, the thing to me in that fight is, is Jurekis Gamboa's speed against the power of Juan uh, Lopez. That's why in March they're talking about Benny. That'll be a sensational fight to watch. And the winner of that will certainly be in line for a world title shot at 135 pounds in the lightweight division. So here we go. Round number four. Miguel Beltran totally recovered from getting knocked down at the tail end of the very first round of the fight. But now he's going to start scoring some punches. Easier said than done with the movement of Yoriokas Gamboa. What an amazing recovery by Beltran. We're talking about a guy who was face down on the canvas and then gets himself back up. And look at him now. As tough as they come. But so slick is Yoriokas Gamboa in the Cuban flag shorts, red shoes, red and white shoes, because Beltran has the solid red shoes on and the red uh, trunks. Gold trim. Remember when we were doing the no, fights no, no, in Mexico and we heard about that 26 hour bus ride of those fighters coming from those mochis to Tijuana. We had to actually actually go ourselves on that bus ride. Yeah, we couldn't believe it as Gamboa lands a right hand. So Benny and I flew to Los Mochis, got on a bus, it came up, and sure enough, it took more than 26 hours. <laughs> we, we broke down a couple of times. But that's what these kids used to go to Tijuana from Los Mochis just to just a spar and maybe pick up 50 bucks. We had a great time doing that though, Benny, I'll tell you. Yeah, Bola being very patient. And you know, he's got those unbelievably quick hands. And he also mixes that in with the movement. But look at that, look at that. that you know, you talked earlier about Pernell Whitaker. That was a Pernell Whitaker move there. He was almost with his uh, with his bottom on the canvas when he went down that time to avoid the punches. I mean, this guy is so slick. Legs constantly. There's a left. Yeah, and, and, but that's the hand speed. He throws it in a bunch of punches. He gets his head going one way and then clips him. That's how he went down in the first round. Beltran realizes he's in with a world-class fighter. And, you know, I'm looking at Gamboa. I mean, I don't see anything that's slowed down with his 36 years of age. This guy looks as good now as I ever saw. Switch the southpaw for second. For Beltran, it's like fighting a speed bag that punches back. <laughs> Beltran, a very skilled fighter himself. That was a little low, but. Let's go. Look at the eyes focused of, of Gamboa, too. If you can see on your screen at home, I mean, they're only a few feet away from us. I'm looking right into their eyes, and you can see this belt trying to put suéltese, pressure suéltese, on him, but suéltese. he just Ofiamo. having difficulty scoring. Gamboa leans into him, stands straight up now, backs Vamos up, backs campana. up, then plants his foot, his back foot and jabs. And he's not even is. breathing after no. doing all those things you said. I started getting tired. He's not even breathing. Yeah. Bell ends the fourth, and again, Gambo just outboxing that time. Nothing too pretty, nothing too fancy, just outboxing. You know, Beltran thought he could take advantage of the inactivity of Gamboa, but he doesn't seem rusty at all. He hasn't fought in a year, and he looks as sharp as ever. Look at this, Benny. Talk about sharpness, man. Watch how he backs him up with his shots. See right there? Get him off balance, hit him with the uppercut, overhand right. There's just so much. You don't know where it's coming from. There's the left hand. And it surprises you because it comes to at you so fast. Benny, what's Vladimir Boldenegro calling? What they're telling him right now here is do not go for the head. Go for the shoulder and get what you get. That's exactly what Jose Luis Castillo did against Floyd okay. Mayweather. Okay. All right, let's see if he can follow that. Here we are, round number five. Seems like pretty good advice. Because the way he moves his head up and down, you're not going to get it. It's so hard to hit. There's the left hook by Gamboa. Beautiful. Starting low and coming up on top. Now he reaches down, and he's so quick. Downstairs, then back upstairs. This is a three-punch combination. It's so fast, that three-punch combination. You don't realize the amount of power, but he gets, you know, he hits you with one side, and then you, your head and your brain starts going one way, and then bang, you hit the other side. And that's what causes the, you to go down and lose your equilibrium. And it's that's, almost like, you know, Gamboa's trying to make up his mind what he wants to do. It looks like now he's deciding to sit down on his punch a little bit more and throw combinations. 
How frustrating is this going to be limpio, for limpio, limpio, uh, limpio, Beltran, limpio, who's limpio. as tough as they come, but you can see his punches are wider, not as crisp, but nowhere near as fast. And as they say that, he clips it with the left hook. Now Yuriukis drops his gloves just as quickly. He can get away with that because he comes back on Sizzle, who got hit with a pretty good left hand of the body that time. But it's almost like Yuriyoki now has decided, okay, now I'm going to go limpio, ahead and limpio, limpio, step it up here and start throwing suéltese, combinations. Suéltese, boqueamo, dale, vamos. But every once in a while, Beltran will catch him. Beltran is no walkover, like I said, even though he was down in the first round and hasn't won a round yet. But you never know what he might do. It's just, as we said, the frustration. And he loads up shots like that. But loading up shots like that aren't going to catch Yuriyoki's uh, Gamboa. This Gamboa with his... Right foot out in front now. Now he's back orthodox. Now here he is fighting as a southpaw. He doesn't even really need to do this. He caught him with a right hand in the middle of all that. You know, that was interesting. He looked a little bit lethargic throwing that left hand, but then that right hand was right on. I was just going to say, you know, he missed that hand like you say when, a, you know, when guys will switch to uh, from right hand to a southpaw that they missed, but he did that by design and then nailed him with that right hand. When you have the kind of talent that this guy has, you can get away with a lot. Jab, jab. And look at it, just leans back, just makes Beltran miss. And anybody else, Beltran would have planted those uh, left and right hand in the face, but not with Gamboa. But Master slip and punch it then. But when you're able to do those many things, Colonel, I wonder if it, it almost limpio, becomes limpio, a detriment limpio, because you can do so limpio, many things. Limpio, you kind of get away from limpio, the one limpio, thing that might be working limpio. for you. Well, he's got so much in the arsenal, you know, both both offensively and defensively. And, and again, I say for Beltran Jr., who's a really good, tough Mexican-style fighter, you know, he just had a vamos, nice combination vamos, vamos, of punches vamos, there. Vamos, segundos, suéltese, boxeamos. La campana. But it's, uh, you know, not very often that he's able to ah. land a series of punches, and then in the belly gets clipped hard. You know, Gambo another round. Nothing fancy, nothing big, just wins a round. 10 9. And, you know, you can tell people this is the kind of thing you should try to emulate, but the problem is not everybody's born with these type of reflexes and athletic ability like they can pick Gambo. And then that incredible ring IQ. Look at the way he feels the fight. He knows exactly when to grab, when to bring that arm underneath. And it begin, becomes so frustrating for an opponent. Como si quiere no tire la derecha, pero mira, esa tiene que estar ahí en defensa. Tiene que estar ahí. Esa cuando lo hiciste fallar, la tira. Pero mientras está ahí. Está ahí y lejos del área del golpeo del. Porque tira el tiro ese mano. He's telling him to keep that arm up high and then come over the top. Sigue con la mano adelante. Let's go. Try to execute that. This all business, you know that uh, when you look at Yoriokas Gamboa, he's in his office now in the ring. He loves his time in the ring. This is round six, scheduled for ten rounds now. Yoriokas Gamboa has won every round. The first round he won 10-8 with a knockdown at the very end of the uh, round. I think that's the first body shot that Beltran has landed. And he, he lands one downstairs, then he reaches for that one downstairs. Nothing there. And in between, Yoriokas hits him with a hard right hand and a left hand uh, and another left hand. So the corner told him to keep that right arm nice and high and then come over the top of the left of Beltran. Yeah, Gamboa's got his left hand down, but he's so quick with it, he can get away with it. His left hand down, you oh, no, 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 trying no. to sucker him with the right hand. Nice job, by the way, by Sammy uh, Burgos, uh, the referee, keeping this thing under control. He's a fine referee. Colonel, that right hand of Gamboa is going to be there. There's CCM throw. Uh, and he, he caught him with a low blow. Okay. He's going to give him a chance. No, he's going to ah. give him a chance. He called timeout. I he can take up to five minutes here. Okay. Yeah, he caught him with a real oh good shot right on top of the cup. He asked him if you want to take the full five minutes. He said no. He, he should take a little more time though. Okay. In, in, in reality, watch this, watch this, watch this. Boom. His uh, is Gamboa said he want to take time and complain about my boat. He comes right after him. 
has 135 to go in the sixth round. Oye, súbelo, súbelo. Halfway through. Súbelo, México, también. Súbelo, vamos, suéltese, suéltese. Vamos. Well, just, Sammy doesn't call him by his name. He says, Mexico, Mexico. you got to bring your punches up. But, you know, that was by design. He get hit with a low blow. Typical Mexican guy. He says, hey, he hits me with a low blow. I'm going to get him back. That was intentional. But you can't blame Beltran Jr. because, you know, he's a world class type of fighter. And he's just getting outclassed by Gamboa. So when you can fight like he can, it's frustrating. Gamboa wants to put on a show for his home folks here. At least put one on to this point through the end of the sixth round. About a minute to go, a little bit less. Won a gold medal in Athens. Yuri Orkis Gamboa. Look at that. He faints with the right hand and then clips with the light left. It's almost like he's playing with him. Beltran, if I were a fighter, I, you know, you don't want to play with him. Then he faints left again, goes with the right hand. Look at him, the hands down. A oh, hard right hand. He hit him with that time. This game boy just having fun out there. That's how skilled this guy is. How confident he is. You can see why he's confident because he can do it so much. Yeah, boy, they're complaining about a little head. Beltran coming in with his head. You know the Mexican style fighters, Benny, they'll do anything they can do. And again, Gamboa just outboxing him in the sixth. Almost had him out at the tail end of the first round. And this is the kind of fight that if you're a boxing fan, you got to appreciate those little things that Yuriyoki does so well in the, in the, in the, in the, in the ring there. And you just got to appreciate that. Benny, you're so right. You know the amount of fights that I've called. Sammy telling us it's a cut. Unintentional. But it's a hit, so it's academic now anyway. If the fight is stopped, it goes to the uh, scorecards. And it's over the left eye. And it's above the eye. Okay, so Gamboa has the cut above the left eye. We're in the seventh round. Let's see if there's any sense of urgency now by Yuriorkis uh, Gamboa. El Cyclone, the Cyclone, right? And he's fighting like that. Look at that, he's got his right hand up now, but he's got a kind of a puffy right cheek. But that's what they told him to place. Place your right hand up high and come over the left of Beltran. And chop, chop with that right hand. Well, Gamboa will take instructions. He's got a great corner, Carlos Gamboa, Pedro Roque. Oh, no, limpio, limpio, no, 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 vamos, limpio. Bien, está bien, está bien, está bien. He also has uh, Augustine uh, Ferrado in that corner as well. A very good corner. Oh, Beltran almost got him. But there's a big difference between almost and the ones that uh, he gets hit by but from the Gamboa. You know, and, and Gamboa doesn't really set his feet, so sometimes he gets caught in between there and has a little balance problem. That's what Beltran has to try to exploit. But it takes a really, really good fighter to be able to take advantage of that with Gamboa because his mistakes are so quick and, and so few. And now all of a sudden, Beltran's starting to find the body of Gamboa. Trying to. But look at the power shots again by Gamboa. Well, but Tron's got to understand, you got to pay the price. You got to pay the price to get close enough to attack the body. That's the only chance you got. You remember the instructions for Beltran was don't try to hit the head. Aim for the shoulder and get what you get. Problem is trying to hurt the body of Gamboa. He's in such great shape. And, and you know, we're already in the seventh round, Benny. That's something you got to put the well earlier. I mean, look at this. This is the Mexican style. Head down, flying with those punches. Outside, nowhere near the, the pop that Gamboa has with his short, crisp punches. Just toughness. That's a slip. That's the southpaw on the right-handed fighter. 
Sammy Burgos right on top of that. Just for a second, he slipped around and vamos, the feet vamos, get tangled up and he goes right on top suelta, of it. Suelta. You know, for Gamboa, he says, my goal is I want to be a world champion again. That's the only thing I'm thinking about, to become a world champion, find that opportunity. Big left hand by Gamboa, and right back came uh, Beltran. So Beltran working as hard as he can, but the ring general in here is Yoriokas Gamboa. I don't know, if, I mean, Beltran had a decent round. Can you give him that round? No. No. <laughs> I agree. You know, just real quick, Kurt, I just wanted to say, you know, Don Chargan, what a great name in boxing. What a great man. And, you know, I grew up in the Olympic Auditorium watching some of the great, great fights he put on there at the Olympic Auditorium. He taught so many people, including De La Hoya, how to be a promoter, how to put on fights. Peter Brody, my great friend, who got me into boxing. A lot of people learned from Don Chargan. All of Famer. What are they saying there, well, They're asking him to sit down a little bit more now. So throw his punches so out of variety, but stick with that right hand. Carlos Gambo is chief second. Here we go. Big looping left hand. And the crowd here urging the Cyclone. Yeah, they want to see him sit down on his punches as the corner. Let's see if he can do that against a very game Miguel Beltran Jr. We said going in it wasn't going to be easy for Gamboa. Then Gamboa looked like he was going to make it real easy with the first round knockout. And ever since then, Beltran has come back and made a nice fight of it, but Gamboa winning all the rounds. You know, the skills of Gamboa, I mean, it just nothing surprises me. Even the way he way blocks that body shot is amazing. He kind of just swings down with it and just redirects that glove of Beltran. I mean, this is as good a school fighter. But, you know, there's this hand speed, but this is as good a school fighter as you see any place. Overhand right, Beltran trying to dig to the body, just just falls short with a little bit of movement by uh, Yoriorkas Gamboa. Nobody really hits him, with the sole exception of uh, Terence Crawford, and, and Crawford was just too big for him. But a credit also to Miguel Beltran, the conditioning of this young man. 29 oh. years of age, so he's got a heck of a chance here. Comes from this fight, he's had a lot of inactivity himself. Well, Beltran, there's a lot of very good guys in the lightweight division that he can contest with. I mean, doing, hanging in here with this guy is a bit of a low blow. Gamboa says, okay, I'm okay. A little payback. Now he's gonna make uh, Beltran pay. Gamboa just never changes the expression on his face. It's all business in there. And, and, and just oozes confidence on his face. It's like looking at a pit bull's face, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is my territory. Look at that little faint. He doesn't even let the punch go. It doesn't phase him. He's trying to shift him now without without throwing a punch. Bounces left, back to his right, ties him up on the inside, spins him around, pulls his hands up, and then shoe shine punches him. It's like, here, take four or five of these. Yeah. You watch it, folks. One of the very, very premier fighters, and certainly one of the best boxers in the in the sport. Even at age 36, he still got it to hand. I think he's got the right promoter now, and Jesse Rodriguez. You know, is going to give you some opportunities. You have a new champions promotion, so let's see if he can stay real busy. Now well, it's apparent that he's done what he had to do tonight. I mean, we're in the eighth round still. There's two more to go. I don't see any way that Beltran is going to catch up with him in the next rounds. We'll take a knockout, something really strange. Round nine coming up. Round nine.
After eight rounds, I've got it 80 71. Beltran was down it, in the first no, round. No, 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 was cut by the eye okay. uh, in the Nine sixth years. round. They're urging Mon, said you got to give it everything you got. You got to get everything you got in these next two rounds. Well, that's, that's very true. Otherwise, he's got no shot. Yeah, Bor, on the other hand, would like to take him out. All right, here we go. Round number nine is scheduled for 10 again. Gambo in the Cuban flag uh, shorts. In the red trunks is Miguel oh, Beltran no, no. Jr. from Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. Big game, been tough. A lot of wild punches, not too much has landed. But done the best he could do against the, just a slick, slick, slick fighter. And Yoriokas Gamboa. Crowd wants to see Gamboa finish strong vamos, vamos, here. Suéltese, Gamboa suéltalo. just sort of toying with him right now. And again, based upon what the corner of Beltran told him to go in and give him everything he's got, it, but it's, it's very frustrating for Beltran because how are you going to reach uh, Gamboa? There's no way to reach him. Look at that. He can't hit this guy. He can't hit him, Benny. I mean, he leans back. Look at him. Then he lean into you. Then he walk away. He gets set up again. He has a, a mastery of slipping punches. You know, they gave a great example of like energy can be consumed by nervous energy in the ring. Gamboa, this is his natural state. He does not use up any energy. Look, look at that slip move there. Yeah. He bends down, slides down the ropes, gets back immediately in a punching position. We're in the ninth round here. Juan Manuel Lopez won a unanimous decision over Christian Mino. Mino was down several times, uh, four or five times in the fight. So he did his job, and this is going to set up. But Gamboa continues the way he's going, going to set up a great uh, promotion for new champions. And uh, Jesse Rodriguez uh, says they're going to have that fight in March. And you know, right now, Gamboa is starting to sense that Beltran is coming in. So he's starting to time his counter counterattack beautifully. Watch that check hook that Gamboa throws. Backs out, he hits him in the back of the head, and uh, Beltran a little frustrated right now. He looks at the referee, he's saying, hey, come on. I'm not taking enough beating without this guy hitting me behind the head. Look at that, look at the speed. Head back and forth. And, and the head down of Beltran and just winging punches at him. And Yuriak Gamboa just knows exactly how to protect himself from it. Years of years under that Cuban boxing style and boxing system. Yeah, even that punch coming in. I mean, Beltran aims for the shoulder. Yuriak wasn't there. And just a slight movement of the head. I mean, like an inch to cause him to miss. He's so slick, you don't even. You know, he reminds me of a lot that, yeah. that fought like this was uh, Ricardo Benito Lopez. Benito Lopez. He's one of the greatest boxes of all time. And, you know, he had that little slick movement. But this uh, Yoriokas Gamboa, I just didn't That's expect right, him to see him this good. I was really looking forward to seeing him, but he looks terrific to me. Last round. Last round. So now this is it. Now let's see, finally. Beltran comes out and tries just, just, just to run over Yuriokis Gamboa. Did a great job on that cut above the left eye from that headbutt in the seventh. Going to the tenth round with the one knockdown way back in the first round. Gamboa winning every single round. So his Bell trying to give it one last shot at finishing the fight uh, strong. Let's see what Gamboa has in mind for this round. Sammy Burgos telling both fighters, you've, you've, done a, you've got a great fight so far. Keep it that way. 
Beltran wants it so bad, he just can't do it with this guy. Beltran gets to the body. Look at him, he's bent over, get the head down. And like at the last fight, if Gaboa came with the uppercut, you know, we don't need to tell him what to do. He's got it full in hand, I'll tell you. Hang in the left hand, trying to sucker him in. He throws the right hand and get ball blast with the left. The way his mind processes the moment is amazing in the part of the And that hasn't slowed down, uh, you know, Benny. You know, for a guy 36, he's obviously, you know, taking a lot. But I think his inactivity in the past year or so helps a guy at age 36. Because his body hasn't had that punishment. It's different training than in a fight when you're getting hit in the head. And you know, he was a little sensitive when I talked to him about being 36 and I mean, how he feels. He goes, I feel fantastic. I don't feel like I've slowed down at all. And, and the way he looks tonight, he hasn't. Gamboa again in the Cuban flag. Minute 42 seconds to go in this fight. He's outboxed a really game Gilbert uh, Beltran throughout the course of this fight. Beltran has done everything he could possibly do, winging shots under the management of uh, Alberto Perez and Fresno. It's, it certainly hasn't been his night, but he's given it everything he's gotten. For that, we give him credit because he's fighting one of the very best fighters in the world. So obviously at 135 here, Colonel, we're looking at, you know, the, fighting Wama Lopez, but then after that, what do you see on the 135 division with Gamboa? Oh, I mean, uh, it's it's uh, it's a great division. You know, you still get Lomachenko out there, Mikey Garcia, Jose Pedraza. Boy, wouldn't that be a great fight, Lomachenko and Gamboa? No, oh, I'd love to see that. And that, could, that fight could be made. Look at these shots here, right at the end of the fight. Less than a minute to go, and the crowd is really into it. Gambo has certainly given him something to cheer for tonight. But his expression hasn't changed in the waning moments of the fight. The face on Mount Rushmore has exchanged more times than the facial expression of Gamboa. And you know, like every great headliner, now let's close it. He's just cruising right now. Tries to load up the right end. Beltran says, come on, the fight's not over yet. Beltran doesn't want to face the fact that he's lost the fight. He, he wants it so bad. He's such a nice kid, but it just hasn't gone his way. But what a comeback from being face down in the closing seconds of the first round. This one's almost in the books. Here comes the bell to end the fight. Three, two, one, and that is it, my friend. Tremendous, tremendous victory for Gamboa. This is a unanimous decision win, and I believe a shutout. Gamboa, they're showing his class by congratulating the corner of Miguel Beltran. Don't forget, ladies. Well, I'll tell you, we've seen a, a terrific night of boxing here tonight. I want to thank our director, Joe uh, Caroso, and our producer, Fabian Angeles, for doing such a great job. Uh, we really appreciate the, the help here. And of course, uh, Doug Jacobs and the handling distribution uh, for integrated sports and our uh, promoter tonight. New champions promotion, Jesse Rodriguez and the matchmaker Ruben De Jesus. Terrific job all around. I mean, getting to see Yuri Orcas Gamboa still hasn't been announced official yet, but when it is, Yuri Orcas Gamboa is going to get the unanimous decision. So we saw Juan Manuel Lopez in his unanimous decision victory over Christian Mino. We saw Jorge Romero in his unanimous decision victory over Jason Vera. And the local kid, Harold uh, Calderon, in a seventh round TKO victory over Emiliano Martin Garcia. A terrific night uh, of boxing here in Miami. We had a fight that you didn't get to see. Uh, Sonny uh, Duverson was able to defeat uh, uh, Jesus Almonte by unanimous decision as well. So it's been a really, really good night of boxing here. We'll make this official momentarily. You know, what a, what a treat to watch an artist like uh, 
Yurioki's Gamboa, literally an artist with his ability in that ring and to do, I mean, here in a brutal sport, can you actually say it's a beautiful thing to watch a guy in a brutal, brutal sport do what he does best? Well, you know, Benny, I, I love this, all the fights that I've broadcast over the years, but I mean, this is a real treat. I was looking forward to coming to Miami to see this guy and to see our old pal Juan Mar Lopez fight as well. I mean, I'm as enthusiastic now as I was many, many years ago calling all the big Ali fights and all of these when you get to see uh, the, you know, the gift, the athletic ability that uh, Yuri Orcas Gamboa has. So it appears Bob Alexander has it and we'll make it a fish. Ladies and gentlemen, from Arnold Hall in Miami, Florida, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Rocky Young scores the bout 99-90. Judge John Rupert scores the bout 98-91. And Judge Bill Ray scores the bout 189. Su ganador por decisión unanime, your winner by unanimous decision, Yoriokas. El ciclón de Guantanamo, Gamboa! So it's official now. Yuri Argus Gamboa gets the unanimous decision. And like I said, it's been Still one, one more fight to go, ladies and gentlemen. One more fight to follow.